uh, when you're cropping an image, you have you really have the option to crop the image or to change canvas size. And there are some clear distinctions between the two. So I would like to talk about that in this video. And so the first thing I want to talk about is cropping. When you're cropping an image, you're going to use the crop tool. And as I said in the previous videos, you're going to choose the option to be able to choose a width, height, and a resolution. Then you're going to choose a width, a height, and a resolution, whether you choose it in inches, like I did here for my print example, or you change, uh, choose it in pixels. Um, for like a web example. But no matter what you're doing when you're cropping, you need to choose a width, a height, and a resolution or Photoshop will figure it out for you. And so if you take this image and you take out the width and the height and you say, I wanna resample this image to be 72 inches and then you crop it, whatever dimensions you crop it to. So you can now change this box here. You can just take the whole image and crop it. You would be changing the resolution to 72, but you have no idea how big the image would be in width and height, right? So let's go ahead and do that. Crop the image here. So we didn't choose a width and a height. I have no idea what's going to happen. If we go to the image, image size dialog box, after we crop it, you can see that Photoshop did change our resolution from 300 to 72. And then it basically just said you have a, a finite number of pixels. You have 2,736 pixels across and 3,648 pixels tall. And the only parameter you gave it was to change the resolution to 72. And so when you change the resolution to 72, it said, well, based on those number of pixels, you could have this image be 38 inches tall by 50.667 inches tall. Sorry, 38 inches wide by 50.667 inches tall. And that might not be what you want, right? If we're look, talking about web resolutions, 38 by 50 inches is really big. It's bigger than any computer monitor I've ever seen. It's bigger than most TVs. And so you want to make sure you're always deciding what the width, the height, and the resolution should be. And so if I wanted to crop this to 3 inches by 5 inches at 300 resolution, let's make it 4, just because the image would get cut off if I did it as 3. But 3 by 5 is a standard um, photo size. Now when I choose the width, the height, and the resolution, and I crop it, if we go back and double check it via image and image size, it gave us the settings that we're looking for. Now what's the difference between cropping and canvas size? So when you are cropping, most times it's destructive editing. And so you use the crop tool, I'm just repeating what I just did, and the pixels up here, let's even make it smaller. Whoops. Do as I say, not as I do. So I'm just, whoops. I'm going to make this box bigger, but I want to eliminate a bunch of the area in the background. So just a side note, if you push the space bar and you do not have a type tool selected, it will change your cursor to the hand tool and you can click and drag. And that is one of my two favorite key commands that work in every Adobe program. The other is holding down the option key to drag and make copies of things, but we'll talk about that later. Okay, so now I'm gonna crop the image, right? And I'm gonna center it in on this guy here. Let's zoom out a little bit. And if I was to crop the image, I'm basically going to lose all of the active image or the extra image that's there. So we can crop it. I'm going to grab the first tool on top of the tools panel. It's the move tool. And now if I try to move the picture, you can see that, that it's the exact size of the window. And so if I move it, you start to see the background, which is transparent. And that doesn't always work. Um, one little trick you can do to make sure that cropping is not destructive. So let's undo that crop is if when you're cropping there's an option on your options bar up here that's a little hard to say um, that says to delete the cropped pixels and so if you uncheck that when you're cropping the picture you won't lose any of that imagery okay. now let's talk about the difference between um, canvas size if you change the canvas size if you go to image and then canvas size you can make the canvas bigger or smaller without modifying the resolution and things like that. And so what you could do is you could make the canvas smaller and then shrink your picture to fit inside the canvas. Or what we do a lot of times, you make the canvas bigger. But what you could do is you could, let's say the image right now is nine inches by 12 inches. Let's hit cancel here, let's crop it. Let's say that we wanna crop it to three inches by five inches, and that's okay. And I'm gonna zoom in like we did before to create kind of a pleasing composition there. 
And then I'm going to make sure that delete cropped pixels is not selected, and then I'm going to crop the picture. Now, let's say that that image is 3 by 5, but I wanted to put it in a picture frame that's 4 by 6 or even 5 by 7. You could come up to the image menu and go back to canvas size, and you could say instead of the image being 3 by 5, I want it to be 5 by 7. And if you select this without the relative checkbox selected, you're just saying it is 3 by 5, and now I want it to be 5 by 7, and the canvas will grow to make it bigger. Whoops. What? don't crop. I have too many tools selected. Now because when I cropped the image I did not delete the unwanted pixels I could still use the picture as being, what did I say, 5 by 7? Because the image was 9 by 12 to begin with and so I didn't delete all the background information. Let's do that one more time. Let's go back until it's not cropped. Let's crop it again, but this time let's delete the cropped pixels so that I, I'm only left with the area that I like. Right there. Well, let's move them over a little bit. So now when I crop, I'm deleting all the background pixels. I'm still cropping to 3 inches by 5 inches at 300, but now if I go to image and canvas size, I can say, well now I want it to be 5 by 7. And when I do it now, you can see that the canvas has has grown. You, you can kind of see it in the previous example, but it's kind of hard to tell because the image was still large behind the scenes. But you can add a border to a picture. You could use this to create a background, and so you could, I'm, I have layer one selected. If I select everything, I can choose edit fill, and I could choose a color, and you could add, I don't know, bright pink background to the back of the picture. Whoops. You would have to Ignore me. We're not going to learn this until chapter 9, so I'm just going to go ahead and do it. So you'd have to get rid of the white background that's on that layer, but then you could create a border in your picture if you wanted to, and you can do a number of different things. The one last thing I want to talk about in regard to changing the canvas size, if you wanted to, you do not have to pick the size of the picture. Right now my picture is 5 by 7. If I wanted to add three inches on every side of the, the image, or even three inches on one side versus another. Um, you can change the, the way that you're viewing this canvas size dialog box by selecting the relative box. And notice how when I uncheck that, I see the actual size of the image. So if I wanted to make it 9 by 12, I could do that. But when I select relative, it resets to 0 because it's saying, well, how much do you want to add? And so if I wanted to add two inches to all sides, right, left, top, and bottom, I'd have to actually add four inches to the width and four inches to the top. And right now, if I look at the anchor section of this panel, it's going to add it from the middle. And so if I hit OK, I'm going to end up with two inch border around all sides, which might be something I need to do for some reason at some point in time. If we do it again under canvas size, but this time I want to add maybe an inch to the bottom. Maybe I'm going to put like artist information or a label at the bottom. I could say I want to add one inch to the height, but this time I want to add it going down. See the picture, how it's, how it's pointing downward? And so now when I hit OK, it's going to work from the top to the bottom, and it will add that one inch to the bottom of the frame. And you might want to do that if you're working on, maybe in your InDesign class you're working on a newsletter and you're prepping the images in Photoshop and you want to put little labels on the bottom. You could prep all the images and then come back as an after effect and say, oh, I should have added some room at the bottom for a label. And you can come and add some room to your canvas size.